Hello and welcome to episode 18 of Let's Code an Indie Game. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to continue working on the collision code. So uh, let's just jump in where we got to last time. So if we uh, run our game we can see that each of our entities now has a bounding box attached to them which follows that entity around but it doesn't currently do anything when um, when that bounding box overlaps with another bounding box and that's what we're going to change in this episode. So let's have a quick think about how how collisions work or at least how collision detection is going to work in our game. So looking at the diagram here um, this is basically how you work out if rectangles overlap with each other in a 2D coordinate system and that's the system we're using. We're using the x and z axis rather than the x and y axis but it actually uh, doesn't really matter which axes we are using because um, you really run the same check twice, once for one axis and once for the other axis. What is that check? Well you basically say does the... Um, how best to explain? Does the top of my rectangle um, start before the um, end of my second rectangle? So yeah, does the top of my first rectangle start before the end of my second rectangle? Um, and if that is the case, then you know that the rectangles um, may cross over. Then you say, is the top of my second rectangle um, does that start before the end of my first rectangle? And if that's also true, then you know that those rectangles must cross over at least in that axis. So they're in the same position in, uh, in along one line. And then if you do the same check for the y-axis, if you've already done it for the x-axis, or the x-axis, if you've already done it for the y-axis, and the check is true for both axes, you know those rectangles actually cross over in 3D space. Or oh, sorry, in 2D space. 2D space. Very important. Um, anyway, like most of the maths um, we will be using, it's probably more complicated to explain it out loud than it is to actually code it. So let's jump back in and, uh, and write some code. Okay, so here we are in our rectangle class. Let's just um, jump straight in and add a method called overlaps where we turn all of that math, so it's really just logic, it's not really maths, into code. So we'll create a function here and uh, because it's uh, an instance function on the rectangle, self is going to be the first argument. The second argument is going to be another and so self will be one rectangle, another will be the other rectangle that we want to compare it to. And we'll pull out two variables here, one called x-axis overlap and one called z-axis, almost typed, uh, almost called it y-axis overlap, z-axis overlap. And we'll pull out a private function as well, and that just means it's a function which lives inside of our rectangle module and we don't um, share it with the rest of our code, called axis overlap. And this function is going to take min1, min2, max1, and max2. So these are going to be our values for the rectangles um, in one axis and we'll compare one axis at a time because things are simpler that way. So how does this work? Well what we do is we just return is min1 less than max2? So this is saying uh, does our rectangle start before the end or does the end of the first rectangle does the start of the first rectangle end or, or exist before the end of a second rectangle? And then, um, and at the same time, for it to overlap in that axis, we need the end of the first rectangle to occur after the start of the second rectangle. There we go. And um, I'll just stick some brackets around them just uh just so that when I look at this I know that we are, we're evaluating all of this and returning it and we need to add them together. So then for our x-axis overlap we can just call axis overlap 
and in here we can work out what our min and max values for each rectangle should be. So min1 is just going to be self.x, so this is just the x position of our rectangle. Min2 will be uh, another dot x. Uh, max1 will be self.x plus width, so this is uh, the yeah, this is just basically how wide our rectangle is, or our um, right-hand corner of our rectangle, or the x value of the right-hand corner of our rectangle. And for um, max2, we just would need another dot x plus another dot width. There we go. And then for the z-axis, we will do the same thing. We'll call axis overlap. And this time we'll use our z values, so self.z, another.z, self.z plus self height this time, and self dot sorry, another, another dot z plus another dot height. And finally, from our overlaps method, we're going to return x axis overlap and z axis overlap. Cool. So if this is true, it should mean that our um, rectangles overlap on the floor of our game world. If it is false, it means that they do not. So where are we going to use this? Right, let's um, jump into our entity class, because our entity is what currently owns our bounding box. And inside of our entity, we are going to create another function. Uh, let's create it here. And we'll call this function collision check. And in here we'll use our bounding boxes to see if two entities overlap. Function, there we go. So again, we'll use self for the uh, entity because it's an instance method, and another, but this time another is another entity. Actually, let's not call it another because it's just confusing. Uh, let's just call it entity or ent entity. Now what are we going to do? Now we can say if self dot bounding box overlaps entity dot bounding box then we know that these entities collide so we want to do something. Let's just make sure that collision check And also overlaps actually because I probably forgot to do that. So let's, uh, yep, let's make sure that both of these methods are available on the instance of our objects. So instance.overlaps equals overlaps. And with our entity, we just did uh, instance.collision check equals collision check. Okay, let's just uh, run our game and see if anything is broken. Nope, that's a good start. So now let's go ahead and use our collision check method. So where we're going to check for collisions is actually inside of our rooms class because this is currently where we have all of our entities in a room. Just to remind ourselves, let's go down, check out room.create, and we can see that room.create has a list of entities which we just pass in when the room is created. And in room.update, here we go, in our update method on room, we already iterate through all of the entities in the room and update them. So this is a, it seems like a sensible place at least, to start with to uh, place our collision checks. So what we'll do is inside of this for loop, where we loop through every entity in the game and update it, we're going to add another for loop inside, so a, a nested for loop. And here we'll say another entity. in oops ipairs self dot entities do end so for every entity we uh, yeah for every entity in that room we're going to loop through every entity a second time and this time we're going to call entity collision check with 
another entity. So we're basically comparing every entity to every other entity and seeing if they collide. Now one thing we do have to make sure that we do is inside of our collision check, we need to check to see if we're comparing an entity to itself. So we say if self equals ent, then return end. So what this will do is if we're comparing an entity to itself, we just um, we stop uh, running the method and we just uh, go back to where we were because an entity will always collide with itself. So it's kind of uh, pointless for us to do that check anyhow. Good, now let's, um, let's just run our game again, see if anything breaks. Nope, fantastic. So now let's actually do something when, uh, when our entities overlap. So to start with, we can just say self dot um, debug color equals and for a color in uh, love 2d we can just use a table um, of three values so let's uh, say no, 2550255 uh, so the values are red green and blue so we're saying maximum red no green and maximum blue and now inside of our draw method on our entity inside of our debug block here we'll just say if uh, self dot debug color, then love dot graphics dot set color, and we don't need red, green, blue, or alpha because instead we're just going to use self dot debug color. So you can call that uh, set color method in a couple of different ways, but we're going to call it this way. And uh, because we're using our view context, it will always it will reset the debug color for us, or it will reset the color for us, so we don't run the risk of turning everything in our game uh, into the debug color. Okay, let's run and see what happens. Cool. So now we can see as our slimes overlap with each other, their bounding boxes turn neon pink. So we know that we know that a collision has happened. So one thing to notice is our player isn't currently taking part in any of the collisions, so let's uh, go in and fix that as well. So in our room code, uh, so this is because we keep all of our room entities inside of the room class, but the player is actually stored in the game state object. Uh, but we can get hold of that by doing game.player. So if we do game.player collision check with entity, and at the same time we'll need to do entity collision check with game.player just to make sure we get uh, both kinds of collision. So now if we run our game, if we collide with an entity, we can see that that entity and the player changes color. Right, so this will be the start of um, our player taking damage if they get uh, if an entity touches them or our player picking up an item if they run over it or our player uh, performing an attack if the attack, if the player needs to uh, touch an entity in order to perform the attack. So hopefully, uh, hopefully people can see how this is going to pan out. So the other thing we may want to do is um, make our bounding boxes a bit smaller because at the moment they're a bit too big. They, um, they don't accurately represent where our player is on the screen so perhaps we can tweak that in the next episode. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and that uh, this is useful for you. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you've got a couple of seconds, it really does help me out. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.